Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam. I'm a board certified facial plastic surgeon. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, helping patients look as young as they feel. And an important part of that is performing facelift surgeries. So facelifts are procedures that are designed to treat the sagging jawline and the uh, sagging neck. So this is a very popular concern for people, a problem that a lot of people really identify with as they start to approach their late 40s and early 50s and they start to see the shape of their face starting to change and then they start to look for opportunities and ways to correct them. Now in previous videos we've talked about um, how non-surgical treatments are really not the ideal treatment for this and that ideally for the problems that are related to sagging which are the ones that cause jowling in the, in the, in the uh, turkey neck and the sagging that you see um, into the, uh, the neck region, a surgical treatment like the facelift and, uh, and neck lift are really the, the appropriate procedures for those, uh, those particular type of problems. So as you all know, from the previous videos, as well as some of the other uh, material I put out on social media, I'm very passionate about the topic of uh, facial rejuvenation. Um, but a question that comes up a lot is, you know, where, what do I look for in a, uh, in a surgeon um, if I'm considering? Because here's the, the reality and here's the unfortunate problem. Facelifts, by, by their very nature, and the uh, the types of outcomes that have been uh, shared and performed over the uh, over the last 100 and something years, um, there has not been a, a lot of great outcomes out there to give the consumer or the prospective patient a lot of confidence that they're going into this procedure and they're going to come out looking natural and normal. Which, at the core of it, what people ultimately want is they want to look like themselves, they wanna look like a younger version of themselves because that's how they feel on the inside, and they don't wanna have any signs of having had any type of cosmetic surgery done, which means they don't want the windswept or pulled look, etc. But what happens is we go out to a restaurant, we go out to a grocery store, we go out anywhere, and we see lots and lots of people who have that look. So as a result of that, it has created a lot of fear and a uh, bit of trepidation about moving forward with facelift surgeries and it's a good it, it's it's healthy to have that type of reservation when considering this procedure because at the end of the day it is your face it is your identity it is you know what you you present to the rest of the world and if you're in your 40s or 50s looking for a procedure like this you've got a lot of years ahead of you that you don't want to have a face that you're not completely comfortable with etc but on the flip hand you also know that the aging process is starting to make you look more and more um, like a different person and keeping you looking like the, 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 the you that you feel. So you wanna do something about it. So this video really is gonna help us um, identify what are the qualities to look for in a surgeon um, when you're considering to have a facelift. So there's a few basic things to keep in mind. Number one, the field of plastic surgery and even facial plastic surgery, which are two you know, uh, different surgical specialties within the umbrella of plastic surgery, um, they, have a lot of different procedures that an individual can perform within those two categories. Um, plastic surgeons, in addition to the, to the face, they do um, breast and body work, they do trauma, they do a number of different uh, uh, reconstructive type of things, which really has nothing to do with facelifts per se. And facial plastic surgeons, um, which, which I'm a member of the, the uh, um, American Board of, the, you know, we do noses, we do cancer reconstruction, we do a number of different types of things that not all of it is um, at all related to a facelift. So at the end of the day, one of the important qualities to look for in somebody who you're considering having a facelift with is a level of specialization. And what I mean by that is they, a, a surgeon who spends a significant part of their weekly, monthly uh, surgical load performing the face of procedure. And that level of specialization is important for two reasons. Number one is you need to have some repetition in order to get a procedure to look the right way in a consistent way. If you're doing something once in a while, you're not gonna have the same opportunity as a surgeon to be able to be reliably creating the same level of outcome. The second part of it is, if you're not good at performing them, you're probably not gonna to get to a point where you're doing lots of them. You know, when it comes to the face, no level of marketing really works because 
you know, before and after says the entire story. So if you don't have a beautiful uh, display of before and after work, you're not gonna get to be busy. So if you are doing good work, you're probably gonna be operating on people's, your patient's friends, their patient's family members, and as a result, you'll get busier doing it, which, which in turn means you'll get better at doing it. So specialization in the particular procedure, and a, and a um, simple question to ask your, your surgeon is how many of these do you perform in a given week, in a given month, and, uh, and then compare that answer with uh, people that you know who are truly specializing. And now just to give you kind of a benchmark, and you know, my practice may be a little bit skewed, we're, we're fortunate enough to be extremely busy doing um, these type of procedures, but uh, you know, I literally perform one, one and sometimes two every single day of the week, so we're talking about anywhere from you know, we're talking about anywhere from 30 uh, facelifts or more in a given month, whereas, you know, an average uh, plastic surgeon or facial plastic surgeon might be doing two or three or four or five. So it's a big difference, and it doesn't mean that they have to be as busy as, as what I just described, but they have to be doing it at a, at a relatively, uh, um, you know, consistent basis. The other aspect of it is you have to, and we just touched on this, you have to look at the before and afters. You have to really assess whether or not the outcomes are meeting the mark. Do they make the person look younger? Do they make the person um, you know, look like they haven't had any work done? Um, are there any telltale signs of that pulling effect, that windswept effect? Um, which is you know, very easy to tell on photographs. And, it, and you don't wanna look at just one or two pictures. You wanna be able to see a, a relatively large number, 10, 20, 30 before and after, so you can get a sense of the, the consistency of these, uh, of these outcomes. The other um, you know, important part that comes down to that is uh, you gotta recognize that there's different techniques that are performed when it comes to facelifts. So the gold standard of facelifting surgery that's been around for 40 plus years, but still you know, only about 5% or less of the surgeons out there perform is a technique that's based off of the deep plane. And the deep plane is a um, procedure that was developed in the mid 1980s, very technically difficult to perform, but when you perform it, you create a very, very natural and long lasting outcome. Um, and you know, it's, the patient is rewarded with, by, by that particular approach. Again, it's difficult to perform. That's why so few people do it. My vertical restore technique that I, uh, I, uh, you know, I personally perform and advocate, and you see all those before and afters out there, it's uh, based off of the deep plane. And then of course there's other components to my, my procedure, but the deep plane is, I would say, is kind of the gold standard um, of procedures. The other names you might hear about are SMAS, um, endo endoscopic, um, and you also hear about uh, mini lifts and things like that. And I'm not to say that they're, you know, you shouldn't have one of those, but the, the reality is you're probably gonna have, your expectations are gonna have to be slightly different in terms of the level of correction as well as the durability. And durability, you know, you should hope anywhere from seven to 15 years of deep plane is somewhere between 10 to 15 years typically in, in the average facelift. If it's well-performed, SMAS facelift should give at least seven years. But unfortunately, when the first two criteria we just talked about, experience level and technique aren't met, a lot of people after a year, they're coming back and saying, hey, my neck is already sagging, my jaws are, jaw, jawline is already sagging, you know, I need another lift. And that's really hard on the wallet as well as the emotions to have to go through a second operation within two or three years of your original one. So it's very, very uh, worthwhile to do your homework um, and make sure that those two basic criteria um, are met um, in addition to, of course, recognizing um, the, uh, the, the style and look of the outcomes. Uh, the other really important things I would say come down to safety. A lot of surgery you cannot perform under uh, IV sedation. Uh, facelift surgery in general and, and face, uh, facial rejuvenation, eyelids and things like that, you can perform them very reliably and very safely under IV sedation. A lot of surgeons uh, don't like doing it that way or don't have experience doing it that way and they prefer general anesthesia. The only thing you gotta keep in mind is when you perform it under general, you absorb some of the risks associated with general anesthesia, you know, the risk of pneumonia, the risk of drug interactions and, and, react, and, and uh, reactions, uh, you know, pulmonary embolism that could, that could cause, uh, you know, real circulatory arrest, heart attacks, strokes, all those things that are just uh, all around part of general anesthesia. Um, the 
those become highlighted and more, more uh, um, you know, they can become part of the, the discussion when you do it that way. IV sedation is, is where you put lo local anesthesia into the tissues and you give some sedative to help relax the person. And, uh, and that's the way we do it. A lot of surgeons, my colleagues um, around the country do it that way. And you know, we're very comfortable doing it that way because the patient's comfortable, it's safe, and uh, the recovery is much faster. That's a really important part. And then the, I would say the other you know, basic aspect to, uh, to look at is more of an intuitive feel that you get with the surgeon and their staff. You know, when you enter this, this, uh, this journey with a surgeon, it is no question going to be one that requires a leap of faith and one that you have to feel a lot of trust, not only towards the surgeon, but their office, their office staff, their team that they surround themselves with. This is something that in our practice, we spend a lot of time and energy and quite honestly, I'm very proud of the team that I have taking care of the patients both before and you know after the, the procedure because helping a person who's feeling anxious about the recovery and all the different um, changes that are happening to their faces in those first three, four, five days can be very anxiety provoking unless you have an inherent level of trust and rapport with the surgeon as well as their, their uh, surgical team. So those are the things I would say are really, really important to, uh, to look for. In summary, you want a surgeon who's experienced and specialized in doing facelift procedures. You want a surgeon who you have vetted um, many, many, many any before and afters, ideally even knowing some of the patients who've had the procedure done, and, uh, and one who uh, displays consistency and reliability over time, and uh, can perform these procedures in the safest way possible, and ultimately you have a, a nice inherent uh, connection. What I would say you should not do is search for a surgeon who just happens to be in a location that's convenient for you um, or somebody who's the least expensive surgeon on the block because I can tell you um, generally speaking when it comes to this type of surgeon I don't want to say that this is a direct correlation but generally the more experienced surgeons that meet those criteria they charge a bit more than the average uh, average surgeon performing facelifts and there is again good reason it is your face it's better to wait save up and get a procedure done with a surgeon that that you feel comfortable with even if they're a little bit more expensive or a lot more expensive, whatever it is, but what it's, but you will end up being in a position where you probably will have to redo it sooner than you'd like or get an outcome that you're not too, super happy with um, if you cut corners on those other, other components that we talked about. And I always you know, tell patients, make sure all those other components are, are in line. Those are the really important ones. And if they happen to be less expensive, well then that's a bonus. You know, then you, 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 uh, you, you go with that one. But, if, but don't let the financial aspect be the only criteria and I know that's a big criteria for a lot of people and I don't want to you know be dismissive of it and insensitive of it but I just want you to understand that it is also in your best interest to make sure you pick the right face of surgeon for you. All right, so I hope that uh, brought some good uh, uh, conceptual understanding over this uh, this topic. I know it's um, it's daunting sometimes with all the different uh, surgeons out there and all the different techniques out there, etc. Uh, but I think this basic guideline will help you navigate um, and get you where you need to be in the safest way possible and, the, and get the results you're looking for. Um, please do not hesitate to ask me any questions you want in the comment section, um, as well as share this with friends and family who will most likely find this information useful and interesting if, if you happen to um, and uh, take a moment to like and and, uh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already all right thanks so much it was a pleasure uh, speaking with you um, about this topic that I'm very passionate about and uh, until next time thanks a lot dr. Karen